Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bethesda. Take these off so I can see. Um, a few announcements. Um, barbecue chicken will be um, October 14th. Tickets will be available next week. Um, it'll be $12 a plate, and you can see one of the men of Bethesda. Um, let's see. Um, homecoming is almost here. Uh, we will fellowship together August 11th at 10, um, the 10 a.m. service with a special guest, um, Andy Jackson, Freddie Craver, and Jessica Brown. Um, afterwards, make sure to have a basket full of goodies to share with our church potluck. Um, invite your friends and family as we enjoy this special time together. Um, let's see. Um, See, if you're uh, responsible for any church account um, at First National Bank, please give Teresa Sink, uh, finance uh, chair, the bank statements from January to June of 24, along with your receipts and explanations for the checks and debits from the accounts. Um, these will be audited by finance committee and receipts will be um, copied for sales tax refund. Um, Circle of Hope, um, the yard sale it will be August uh, 10th in the Family Life Center. Um, so if you're cleaning out like I am, um, you can bring your donations to the Class of Christian Fellowship, um, or you could probably put them on the stage in the Family Life Center like I did because I had so much stuff. So it's getting full over there, by the way. Um, and then um, this Sunday is the last, uh, last Sunday for Circle of Hope's month-long food drive. Um, thanks for all who have participated and helped fill a need in our community. And the last, um, the last announcement is hard for me to make. Um, today's Devin's last day as our music leader. Um, we would like to thank him for sharing his gifts with us, and we um, wish him the best in whatever the Lord leads him to do. And I don't know about anybody else, but he has really touched my heart with his music abilities. Um, and when I was at my lowest, um, and when I started coming back to church, um, Devin's messages have really, really helped me be closer to the Lord. And I really, really appreciate Devin for that. Okay. Thank you. Y'all would stand and worship.
Good morning, Bethesda Church. It's good to see you and our visitors. We love having you here, and we praise you and thank you. You know, I love each one of you, and I'm just not saying that. You're my church family. This is the day the Lord has made, and he says rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to be happy today. This is God's day. Isn't it great to be seen? Anyways, God has all kinds of promises for us. He never breaks his promise. We're the ones who breaks promises. I want to read a few things, and I may do this a little different today. Whatever. Is that okay? I'm 85, I can do what I want. <laughs> when you get old, you can do what you want. When I do my devotionals, I have several devotional books. This came out of one. It says, Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. That's from Psalms 26. Praise the Lord. Friend, God is working for your good. The familiar verse in Romans reassures us this. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. He is working in everything that happens in your life, good and bad, expected and unexpected, to teach you, to bless you, to stretch you, to lead you. Exceed your own expectations. Seek God's will in your planning. Make him the focus of your plans and the career center of your dreams, then know that even when he doesn't go as you intended it to, or expected, you can trust that one, that our knowing God has it all under control. Everything is in God's timing. It might take 20 years to bring your husband to salvation. It took a while, we prayed for Wally. And once God got hold of him, you couldn't stop him. 
And that's what it's all about. We lost a lot of good friends because we had to change. But as I, uh, I guess I better go to the prayer thing before I get all messed up. Uh, I'm, I better not shake with the Holy Ghost. I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Ooh, Lord, here I go. <laughs> Calm down, Judy. Satan, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Unless I'm one of those shakers from way back that um, 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 Jerry told me. <laughs> oh, I'm shaking again, Lord. <laughs> here we go. Oh, gosh. Uh, the prayer book. Uh, please pray for me tomorrow uh, because my doctor's visit is very important. Pray for Cal Mason. She's got all that all over her. And Carol doesn't know what it, what it is. So she's going to the doctor tomorrow. So let's pray. I think I have my wrong glasses. I don't know. And pray for uh, Linda Dar. As you all heard, if you haven't heard, Linda passed away. Yes, she died, and uh, she and I were supposed to go out to lunch, but we had to wait because she hasn't felt like eating. So that's saddened our church family. Doris Atkins, she's in the hospital, but I think Chrissy said she's doing some better. Right, Chrissy? Uh, I put my family. I want you to pray for my family. We're a dysfunctional family. We really are. And I want God to use me, and I hope my, some of my kids come to Jesus before I die. And that's my prayer. And Jerry Wooten family, uh, Margaret's a good friend of mine, and uh, he died, and the funeral is this afternoon. And children and elderly who would love to go to church, but no one to take them. Unspoken and Nelson family. We have requests in our book. And also, do not forget all the prayer concerns in our bulletin. Each one is important. And each one of them that can't come, we need to continue to pray for them. A lot of people are really sick. A lot of people are hurting. A lot of people, hearts hurt. They've lost a loved one. There's many, many reasons. So we need to continue to pray for them. But I want to, I'm going to do this a little different. Instead of closing my eyes right now, you know, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And I have watched the Olympics, and I praise God they're here at a good time because our world is in a mess. And I'm praying, and I look at them. When the swimmers come in second or third, they hug the winner. I mean, they seem to really care about each other. And that's what I'm hoping, that these Olympics will bring people together again. We need to be together. When you're hurting, when you're happy, when something good has happened, we all should praise and be thankful for you too. That's what loving each other is. If you're crying, I should cry. If you're happy, I should be happy with you. We need to show love. That's what's wrong with our, our nation, our community. We need to start within ourselves, go to our families, go to our neighbors, our church family, our community, and love can just spread out. And that's what we need. We need to be Jesus, hands and feet. And Billy, I asked him if it was all right. Last week, I saw Billy. He walked two ladies. He's a big guy, and I just fell into him. Anyways, he's a big guy, and he had two of these ladies on either arm who walk with, uh, what do you call them, canes. 
He walked them across the street. I saw that. That's being God's hands and feet, helping each other. But we need to praise God and bring, hopefully, we can start within ourselves. And Devin, we want to pray for Devin. Huh? Oh, he's up there. Hey, Devin. We want to praise for you and thank you for all that you've done here and, and, and wish you the best. Maybe you'll come back to us. Last week, uh, the last time you preached, it was absolutely wonderful. Is this our new pianist? Welcome. We're anxious to see you and hear you. I hope we don't scare you off. <laughs> huh? Oh, you used to be Pentecostal. Well, I just want to pray. I'm anxious to hear our minister today. And we need to keep him in prayer that God will use him to touch our hearts, touch our minds, and help us to have a good week. And as you go out this week, make sure you smile at somebody. I look at the homeless people on the corners. I can't give to each one, but I can pray for them. And it saddens me that people have to live like that. Each one of us are so blessed. I mean, we are truly blessed. And, and do we thank God? We need to praise him. He loves our praises, and we worship him. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And I pray for uh, Pastor Watts that you will bring us a message this morning that we won't ever forget. Amen. I truly believe it. And your wife, Ms. Watts, we're glad to have you. And as we go this week, give a smile, give a hug, Give a touch to someone. Call someone up and tell them you love them. And what the world needs now is love. And you know, God has all these promises for us. And as I said, he doesn't uh, fail his promises. We do. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, y'all help me pray. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Remember, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. I fell into Billy's arms today. I tripped again. I think it's my excuse. Good morning and welcome to Bethesda. I'm Wendy. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Wendy Latham Henderson. And we have a lot of new people, so I know there's some here that don't know me. Uh, my grandma and grandpa Latham went to church here when I grew up in this community. I joined Bethesda as an elementary child through confirmation class with Joe Reagan. I moved around a lot, but Bethesda has always been and remains my community of faithful followers of Christ and a place I come to worship. I've enjoyed our different speakers, and today I get to introduce my new neighbor, Pastor Watts. His name is Warren Watts, and he and his wife travel every Sunday to Bassett, Virginia, where he is currently pastoring at Star of Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. Pastor Warren is a veteran who served 20 years in the U.S. Marines. Reverend and Mrs. Watts reside in Lexington, where he is employed at First National Bank. Warren loves to study and share the Word of God. He was ordained by the Rowan Baptist Association in 2009. He attended periodically teaches 
attended and periodically teaches at Vintage Bible College, where he earned a bachelor and master's degree in theology. He and his wife of 45 years, Yvonne, are both here with us today. We just recently became new neighbors, and they have shown me their kindness, encouragement, and have helped me. I am thankful Pastor Watts is led and excited to fill in as a speaker for us today. Let's give him a warm welcome. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. The word says, <clears throat> I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we should be cheerful, joyful, and excited to be here. Uh, I'm a little anxious. I'm not nervous. Some people say, when you stand before folk, you get nervous. I say, no, because God is with me. And I trust the Holy Spirit to lead in God. Uh, I want to start this out by saying, change is difficult for everybody. And you're going through a change. As a matter of fact, the young man, uh, I don't know Devin, but I watched you a couple of Sundays and I listened to his music and I know you're going to truly miss him. But God always has a ram in the bush because your new musician is already here. So you're not looking for that. But I know you are looking for a pastor of your church. And I tell you this, as you look for one, the word of God says, look for somebody that has the heart of God. And today, when I, as I speak to you, I'm going to speak to you about fixing your eyes on Jesus. Because too many times <clears throat> we are so distracted by what's around us and not what's in us and not what God wants us to do. Amen. So before I get started, <clears throat> I'm going to get my wife to come and sing a song or lead us in song, a song. Yeah. If you don't know it, catch on to it. Um, but uh, I just need something to bring me up, take me up, then bring me back down. Amen. Go ahead. Hmm. You want me to play? What you going to do? Praise the Lord, everybody. What you going to say? Praise the Lord, everybody. God is good and worthy to be praised. We thank you for inviting us here this morning. And I mean, you know, even though worship services are different in all churches, God does not change. And I tell you, I wouldn't give nothing for my journey now. I thank him, hallelujah, for he saved my soul. And he has been with me, I, I, taking me places I never thought I would go. And I just thank him for being so good and so merciful and so foreseen. You know what I mean? I'm just going to sing this song really. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake Until I lay my head Oh, I will see of the goodness of God for all my life you have been faithful. I got any witnesses here? Yeah. And all my life you have been so, so good. Yes, sir. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father, and I've known you as my friend, and I have lived in the goodness. Oh God, for all my life you have been faithful, oh yes you have, and all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am able, oh I will sing 
of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Amen. She wanted me to play for her, but I'm too nervous to be playing on the piano right about now. All right. <clears throat> So a topic is fix your eyes or fix your thoughts on Jesus. Turn in your Bibles if you have them with you, and they should be presented on the screens. And this is something new for me to be teaching or uh, preaching from screens. I teach from them, but I don't preach from them. Hebrews, the third chapter, verses 1 through 6. And this is the NIV version of the Bible. It says, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as a son over God's house, and we are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. And so today we're going to look at a couple of things. One, we're going to look at the comparison between Jesus and Moses. Y'all yeah, departed me about a month ago. I had some viral infection. You know, so much going around. And it's giving me this terrible cough, so just pray for me. We're also going to find out that God, great, Jesus is greater than Moses, even in his ministry. And if you fix your thoughts on him, whatever you're going through, you'll get through. Because if God takes you to it, he'll take you through it. Now, I'd like to hear some amens. Amen. Now, Dan didn't tell me how long I could preach. If I don't get any amens, and I'm a Baptist preacher, amen, we may be here for a while. I know you want to celebrate my brother leaving and going on to what God has for him. I know you want to hear his music, but I will take my time. So if you encourage me, I will move along. Amen? amen. All right. So, but it's always a joy to come together and worship. Is that not right? Uh, how many of you look forward to being here in church on this morning? Uh, amen. And they were talking about waiting in, in Sunday school, and, you know, that's a hard thing for us to do. When Wendy, my neighbor, came and asked me would I come and preach for you all, I had to make arrangements because I do pastor the church, and I do love my church. Uh, uh, but God may have other things for me because it's time for me to get closer to home because I'm not getting any younger, as a matter of fact. But uh, I said, yes, I'll be glad to. And, and she was asked a question, well, you know, have you ever had a black person at your church? And I'm like, that bothers me. Because as children as go of God, we are all what? One color. His children. That's it. When I went into the Marines, the first thing they taught us was that we were not black, red, yellow, white. We were all green. Because that's what we wore. So I've been indoctrinated to understand, and I need you to understand, don't look at me as the messenger. Think about God and his message. Because I may say some things because the word of God will cut to and fro. It, does, it, it, it encourages us, but it can also discipline us. It puts us in our place. And sometimes we need to be reminded. And as I listen to the news, I talk about the family that lost three members, the gospel family. That's sad. But God knew. When we look at Gaza and what's going on over in Israel and Ukraine and all that stuff, God still knows. When we see what's going on around us and see somebody, the young lady that went on to be with the Lord, God knew. But our thoughts can get distracted because we're hurt, we're sad, we wonder why the travesty. And I'm going to say this. <clears throat> we're going to be voting here in about a couple of months. And let me tell you this. Some people are going to be happy. Some are going to be angry. But no matter what, we as Christians need, need to be just that. Believers in the word of God, and whoever is in charge, we need to pray for them. Because if you're not praying for your government, what's our point? Because our government needs some prayer. We got some issues. 
this country has some issues. I served 20 years in the military, and it did not matter to me who was the commander in chief because I still took an oath. Amen? But now I've taken a better oath. I serve the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm in the army of the Lord. But it's good to be here this morning. Uh, I, I want you to imagine something with me for a moment. You're watching a basketball game, and your favorite team is in the finals. Uh, there are two seconds left in the game, and your team is down by one point, and your, one of your players gets fouled, and a referee awards them two shots. So you're sitting there, you're praying and, and hoping and cheering on your, that player, because if he makes both of those shots, then your team will win the game. They will become the champions. But not everyone watching grants him or her or him to make those two shots. Somebody wants him to miss. Somebody wants to distract him. Some will yell, some will boo, some, some will call his names, and some will wave plastic sticks that, to get his attention. They know that if he can, they can distract him from what he's supposed to be doing, and the ball falls through the floor and not through the hoop, then they lose. And he cannot ask the referee to tell the, quiet, the, the uh, crowd to be quiet. He, he cannot do that because they won't tell them. He has to concentrate on his free throws. Uh, and the best thing he could do is to fix his thoughts on what he's about to do. Bethesda, you need to fix your thoughts on what you're doing in the name of Jesus Christ. There's, no, there's so much going on in our lives. Busy schedules, health issues, business deals, financial crisis, deadlines at work, bills that need to get paid, balancing the checkbook if you che use a checkbook anymore, thinking about your career, thinking about going to church and what you got to face, thinking about those people that every time you come to church, they look at you funny. Amen. Uh, but we've got so many distractions, and the list could go on and on and on. And it's not easy for us to focus on one thing. And, 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 and we, it's hard to do that because we're surrounded by so many distractions. And there are a lot of distractions. Uh, you know, I've been to churches where you can go in there and all the kids are sitting there on their iPhones. You ever seen that? I, I don't see that going on in here. I think they might get disciplined. They should. Uh, uh, you got so many people that rather stay at home and not come to church. They can get all the Jesus they need by watching TV. The Bible says, do not forsake the fellowship of the brothers and sisters. We need to come together. But it's becoming more and more difficult to keep our minds focused on something. And what we normally think about are the things that we can see, feel, and touch. We can't see Jesus but yet we believe in him. The world thinks you're crazy because you believe in a man that supposedly went to a cross, that died, supposedly rose early on a Sunday morning and rose all power in his hands that we now have the, the right to the tree of life, that we now have salvation. The world thinks you're crazy. And if you don't believe it, think about how you thought before you got saved. But if you have your Bibles, I want you, in, in, in Hebrews 1 and 6, the author tells us to fix our thoughts. I'm going to give you two reasons why. In verse 1 uh, of that chapter, it says, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. Who is this author talking to? He's talking to us. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to people who claim to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that means we need to what? Pay attention to what he is saying. He is addressing us, brothers and sisters, as holy brothers and sisters. What does that mean? That means that we're set apart from the rest of the world. Amen, somebody. That should give us joy to know that we, yeah, we're peculiar. Yes, we are different. Why? Because we are set apart from the rest of the world. I know we get in here sometimes, we don't act like it. But we are set apart from the rest of the world. We share in a heavenly calling. 
meaning we are together in this thing, we are to persevere in our faith and our focus on Jesus. Now that word fix means, it comes from the Greek, word means concentrating our ga gaze. Uh, one of those comedians, uh, he talks about looking at an orange ball or he said, why are you looking at it so much? Because it said concentrate, so he stared at it. I, I was trying to remember that joke. I was gonna look it up, but I couldn't, I, I can't remember. Yeah, I know who I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> it's a look away from other things so that we can fix our fo focus and our attention on one thing. It means that we need to completely put our minds on Christ. Now, I'm gonna give you this, 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 this nugget right quick because for, so you understand where I'm going. With all you got to do, you need to focus on who? Jesus Christ. Amen? But it is a command to fix our thoughts on Jesus. In verse 1, Jesus is identified as our apostle and high priest. Meaning, apostle is a person who is sent by God. And, and, and to this earth as his representative. And as the high priest, he is the one that goes between us. I uh, think the gentleman was saying this morning that when we mess up and God sees it, there's somebody standing right beside him that says, I died for him or her. He's our go-between. Amen? He is the one that's there to offer a sacrifice of reconciliation. And our apostle Jesus speaks to us from God, and as our high priest, Jesus speaks to us for God. Wow, what a mighty God we serve, dude. Send his only begotten son, that the world through him might be saved. Not condemned, but saved. There's a story about a young man who was determined to win over the heart of a young woman. A young girl. He, he wanted to pursue this girl and marry her one day. So he came up with this thing called the campaign. It was a month-long campaign, and what he did was he started sending this girl every day a beautiful gift. Well, every day for a month, the greatest gift appeared on the girl's doorstep. Those gifts were delivered every day <coughs> by FedEx. The campaign worked out very well. The girl eventually fell in love, but she fell in love not with the young man, but with the FedEx man. <laughs> See, brothers and sisters, every day God offers us a gift, and the greatest gift is Jesus Christ. And in Jesus, the campaign, he is there to win our hearts. But often we fall in love with the wrong person or the wrong thing. Fixing our thoughts on Jesus requires time to study God's word and time to pray. This young lady right here, I've, I've watched you all a couple of times and I made a comment to her. Every time I see her, she has a different hat on. And she moses up here, and that's, that's complimentary. She comes up here shaking or whatever, but yet she still stands for the Lord, pressing her way. That's a witness to somebody about persevering in faith regardless of. I heard her speak about Wally. Wally's not here. So apparently Wally's with the Lord. Amen. But he got what? Saved before he went. Now how long she waited? Years. That's called persevering. That should be an example for all of us. Not to boast, pick, pick her up and make her look good. Not to make Bethesda look like, oh, that's what people get saved. No. It's to glory in God about the salvation of God and how joy can come from seeing somebody get saved and those of us who persevere. This young lady here is in crutches. Lord, we're going to pray for you on that. But she pressed her way to be here this morning with you. And so many others have. We had to fix our thoughts on him because by remembering his faithfulness, let's think about his faithfulness in the past. We can fix our thoughts on Jesus by replacing our human perspective with a heavenly perspective. When somebody makes you mad, you don't think heavenly, do you? Keep driving down the road and you'll know what I'm talking about. The way people drive nowadays, it's ridiculous. Weaving in and out of traffic and there's a traffic jam ahead, they can't get nowhere, but yet, they almost took your life. 
You know your first thought was not, bless their soul, Lord, <laughs> when they cut you off. But Jesus is our apostle and high priest. Now, in verse 2 through 4, the, the, excuse me, the author explains his first reason why we must fix our thoughts on Jesus. He does that by doing a comparison and a contrast. Verse 2, starting there, says, He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus had been found worthy of greater honor than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honor than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. If we were to ask the British people today, who is the greatest Brit of all times? Some of them would probably say we, Winston Churchill. If we were to ask Americans, who is the greatest person of all times? George Washington would probably be at the top of the pole. But if we were to ask the Jewish people in the first century AD church, who was the greatest person to ever live or the greatest Jew, you know who they would say? Moses. They would call out Moses to Jews. Moses was the greatest person who ever lived. It was through Moses that God delivered Israel out of Egypt. It was through Moses that God gave them the law. The author of Hebrews knew that when it came to faithfulness, it was hard to beat Moses. Remember, if you know anything about the Mount of Transfiguration, when the three disciples saw what was going on, what did they say? Let's build a tent for Jesus and Moses and the other guy. Amen. He mentioned Moses first. And they liked Moses so much because he led them through some difficult times. Can you imagine one person controlling millions of people walking through the deserts of Israel? I don't know if you've ever been to Israel. Some probably have. It's difficult to walk over there. Millions of people, two million plus, and Moses led them. So they respected him. Moses got the law. So they respected him. They loved him. Yet Moses was faithful to God's people, but he had to also deal with the complaints. He also did, had to deal with the demands. He also had to deal with the opinions because they all had an opinion, just like we all have an opinion about what should go on. No match, though. Excuse me. Excuse me. But he was just faithful. Now, what I want you to do is look at this word house that's in that scripture. House is the key word which refers to God's people. Moses was indeed faithful in all God's house. He was a part of the house of God, the Jewish people. But Jews idolized Moses so much that they even tempted to put him above Jesus. That's why the author reminds us that Jesus is greater than Moses and to realign our focus on Jesus. Moses is a part of the house, but Jesus is the builder of the house. Y'all hear what I said? We are part of the house, but God built this house. The young man that preached last week said, this is God's house. Well, no, that was when Devin preached. Preach. He said, this is God's house, and we should honor that. It's not my house. It's not your house. So whatever happens here, we represent God. We're part of it. But what we got to understand is that everywhere we go, we represent God because he's in us. And as we go around, we are the church. We are his people. Everybody, you got people that's going to see you, and the only church they're going to see is you. So if they see you, being nice, doing good things, and turn right around and cussing your neighbor out, there's going to be a problem there. Amen, somebody. If you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> That's why he remembered that since the builder is greater than the house, he is certainly worthy, worthy of more honor and glory. Jesus is above Moses, period. Jesus is above any man or woman period. There's nobody greater than Jesus. Amen. 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 So brothers and sisters, Jesus is the builder of everything. He is the builder of the house of God, his church. We are his church. This house that was built by Jesus 
He wrote the blueprint of our life before we were born. But are we willing to say yes to God's master plan for our life? You don't know where you're going to be going in the future. You know you got a direction, but you got to let God take you there. Amen? And God only can do it. Because as the builder, he knows what's broken. He knows what needs to be fixed. He knows the broken promises. Uh, a young lady mentioned that there are some friends that you've lost along the way. Well, you know what? Sometimes God does some weeding out. COVID proved that. You go to churches now that were flowing with people, crowded every Sunday, but COVID came along. We couldn't go anywhere. We were mad. We didn't like that because we like to get out and do stuff. But when they came to church, I think he did a separating process because now in church you got worshipers in the house of God. Who came here to worship this morning? I did. When you came here this morning, you had who on your mind? Jesus. Amen. So in verses 5 through 6, this author gives us the second reason why we must fix our thoughts on Jesus. Once again, he does a comparison and a contrast between Jesus and Moses. But this time is regarding ministry. In verse 5 it says, Moses was, a, was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken, of, by, spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, and we are his house if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence in the hope in which we glory. As the comparison and contrast between Jesus and Moses continue, we see Moses was a faithful servant, but Christ was a faithful son. The contrast between servant and son is underlined by the fact that Moses was a servant in all God's house, while Christ is the son over God's house. Amen, somebody. Moses ministered to Israel, the people of God under the Old Testament. His ministry spoke of things to come. But Jesus ministered under the New Covenant, and his ministry has been, was to bring fulfillment of those things. Moses ministered in the shadows, while Jesus brought the full and final light of the gospel of God. Moses led people to the edge of the promised land, while Jesus led people to the new promised land who, for those who would faithfully serve him in his house. And we are his house if indeed we hold firm to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. Story of Joshua and Caleb, you've heard of those two. Joshua and Caleb were two that when the, the 10, excuse me, 12 men were sent out to go spy on the uh, Canaanites, right? They went to bring back a report and they said they came back bringing, so two people had to carry grapes and they were talking about how much it was plentiful with milk and honey. But then they said, but the people. But Joshua and Caleb, okay, matter of fact, Joshua said, or Caleb said, hey, we can go and take the land right now. Those two, if you re read the whole story, were the only two Israelites of that generation that made it to the promised land. The rest of them died in the wilderness. And they did it because Joshua and Caleb had confidence in God that they would one day enter the promised land. And God honored their faith, and they were, and they were able to enter the promised land. Brothers and sisters, it's not enough for us to be out of Egypt. Too many people want to always go back to Egypt. You can't go back to what was. Because of the fact God says move on. They, they, they need to, you need to follow God into the promised land. We should reveal the same kind of joyful confidence and hope as Joshua and Caleb did. Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. Do I need to make that clear? Yes, we are called Christians. That's because we are supposed to be what? Christ-like. That means that we have a relationship with Christ. When you pray to the Father, you don't go, hey, Pop. You say, Father, our Father, which art in heaven. We have a relationship. That's what Christianity is. 
And I think we tend to forget that when we got a denomination, when we got a church, we got this group of people, that group of people, and all of us say we serve the same Lord, we sing the song, when we all get to heaven. But you know what? You can't get to heaven like some of us act sometimes. But when we all get to heaven, we're going to have a great time. We can have a good time now in the name of God. But, but, but we've got to understand we've got to fix our thoughts on Jesus. My last illustration to you is about Martha and Mary. In the Bible, we, we, we read the scripture where it says that Martha and Mary, who were friends of Jesus, uh, had company. The company was Jesus. Uh, and, and the disciples had went to the house of Martha and Mary, and Martha is busy uh, entertaining her guests and preparing food in the kitchen. But somewhere in a quiet corner, the Lord Jesus is calmly teaching a handful of people who are intently listening to their every word. And Mary is one of them sitting at the feet, very focused on Jesus and his teachings. But Martha is distracted with many things. She desperately rushes over to Jesus and says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Feeling compassion for Martha, Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus can feed 5,000, certainly he can take care of a house full of people. Sometimes we forget how big our God is, and we run around distracted and distressed. I call it the Martha syndrome trying to make everything just right. You know how those busy bodies are in the church, and, and I'm not knocking anybody for what you do for the Lord, but if what you do for the Lord, for the Lord distracts you from the word of God and makes you mad at a brother or sister that's listening to what God has to say, then that's a distraction. Are y'all following me? <clears throat> it is so easy for us to get distracted by the world because, you know, in today's world, and you've alluded to it already, the, the church is supposed to ha bring the world in, but what we want to do is act like the world when we bring them in. We compromise. The Bible says do not compromise the word. But we're trying to turn the church into what the world wants. The great music, and there's nothing wrong with music. The young lady playing the bass guitar. I play the bass guitar. I play at it. Hey man, you Devin, you play on the piano? I play on the piano, I play at it. But you know what, that should not be a distraction for what I do to overcome me glorifying God, amen? amen. Brothers and sisters, we, since we share in the heavenly calling, we must fix our thoughts on Jesus. Jesus is our apostle and high priest. He is our creator and our savior. He is the builder of the house. He is faithful. He is worthy of honor. He is a son of God. Jesus is greater than Moses. Therefore, we should fix our thoughts on him. Get out of the Martha syndrome. As you are trying to make decisions about moving forward, doing bylaws, uh, making decisions about who's going to do what, who's going to be in charge, making decisions about finding someone. Yeah, you don't have to find someone to come be your pastor. God's going to send them. The thing is, you need to make sure you see them when they get here. Because if you don't, because you're looking for something that you want it to be like, then you're not looking at the right thing. You've got to look at the heart of God in that person. When you're working, you have to be patient with one another. My home church, my pastor did not pre prepare my home church for him to leave there. He was there 45 years. I said, I'll never do that. But he'll be there 45, he was there 45 years, and God took him home. Left the church in disarray. It took them six years of infighting, six years of make, trying to do things. They changed all the bylaws. <coughs> they were Baptists. They already had bylaws. They, they, they started arguing over money. They couldn't decide how they want to do this, how they want to do that. When you are arguing about something, you ever argue with somebody? Who wins? That's right. The devil wins, especially between brothers and sisters. You can't move 
forward. You can't advance in where God wants you to do, what God wants you to do for the kingdom. And if you don't let go of yourself and say, you know what, it's time for us to do what God wants us to do and focus on Jesus, you can't do anything at all. But the thing about it is that we find that Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our apostle. We find that he is the builder of the house. And if he built it, guess what? It's his house. And you know what? He is our minister because he is the son of God. I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you how to do. Dan can't do that. All he can do, I, I, I think he is several men in here that you're, you're, you're trying to get together, men and women, I hope you're all working together, uh, trying to get together to make decisions. There are no big eyes or little U's. They're only us's. And we have to walk in the light of God. Let God lead your pathway. Let God show you the way. But you got to first keep your thoughts on Jesus. Amen. ushers would please come forward. I'm going to throw her on the spot. Miss Watts, you will come sing with us. You sang our special today. So come join us. If you want to come on, no, it's just fine. Little did you know.
Father, uh, we offer this offering to you, Lord. We ask that you bless it. Multiply it for your kingdom, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We would stand as we continue our worship.
and shrimps waiting on you. Just wanted to, I wouldn't be right if I just walked out the door today and didn't thank anybody. Um, <clears throat> so I, I wrote everything down, so pardon with me. Uh, I didn't want to forget anybody. But as I'm doing this, Joe, if you'll, if you'll throw them screens up, I just thought this is cool. That's me. All right on the left. Well, that's when I started. And this is me when I took over the drums. Right there in the front beside John, and this is us now. So, cool. Uh, that's just cool stuff. Um, good morning. Yeah, thank you for the support I felt today. I've been uh, very blessed. Um, uh, I've had a couple people come to this morning, along with the band again. I really appreciate everything. <clears throat> uh, first and foremost, today is not about me at all. Uh, today is about God. We are here in unison to worship and praise our wonderful God, the one who loves us, the one who saves us, uh, the one who died and rose again. You know, he bore the cross and he beat the grave. That's my king, and that's our king. This decision is not my own. It is a step of faith and obedience to how the Lord has directed me in my life. I don't know what's next, but because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I say this not out of pride, but out of love and thanksgiving. And like I said, I wanted to thank a couple people quickly. I started learning piano at a very young age, of nine, eight or nine, from Brenda Troutman. Um, and if she somehow sees this, I want to thank you, Brenda, um, for all the lessons up until I was 18 years old. I, I visited her house for lessons many, many Wednesday nights um, when I did not want to half the time. I hated it. I loved her, but I hated piano lessons. Uh, secondly, I want to thank Charlie Ward, um, who lives up the road. He gave me drum lessons in all my teenage years uh, while I was the drummer with the band. Um, I'd also like to thank Mitch Snow uh, for all his support and ideas he'd given me uh, a couple years ago we met, and I know he's watching over me today. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I want to thank Jeremy and Joey. Uh, Jer Joey stepped in like the man. It's doing great, and uh, I really thank him. But, Jeremy, uh, we've been together for a long time now, and I really appreciate, you know, helping me out. I've learned a lot from you, technology-wise. Um, so I really appreciate it. And the smooth transition we had coming into the sanctuary, smooth as butter, 
and we've had no issues. So thank those two guys. And if it wasn't for those two guys, this wouldn't happen at all. So I give them my thanks. Uh, obviously, I want to give a huge thank you to someone who without him, I wouldn't be here at all, musically, spiritually, too. Uh, and that's John Essick. Uh, John, if you see this, thank you for all the long hours after practices. I mean, me and John, we would, and Matthew, and oh, all the band, but after the band would leave on like Tuesday nights, we'd have our 7 o'clock, 7.30 practice. But we would turn a 7 o'clock practice into here at midnight. We'd sing around and just mess, mess around and sing gospel uh, quartet stuff. And you know, he's just helped me out uh, on the piano, et cetera. So I just want to thank him for everything. Because if it wasn't for him, uh, I wouldn't be here today musically. I thank the band uh, this morning again and the other night at practice. But once again, thank you all for your dedication uh, to the band being here. Um, each Sunday, each practice, and uh, just using their God-given talents. If it wasn't for them, I would have a hard time doing what I needed to do. So I want y'all to give them a hand because they're awesome. <clears throat> Let's see. Thank you to my parents for all your support, Mom. Dad's working. Uh, thank you for transporting all the practices and lessons all my life. I love you dearly. Um, Thank you, my girlfriend, Ella, for all her support. Um, she encouraged me every day to be the best disciple I can be, and I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you, my grandparents, Grandma. Grandpa's back there. Grandma watching, and I know my grandpa's watching over me. Uh, I wore his shoes today in honor. <laughs> so I, know, I definitely know he's with me. Uh, uh, I know, I'm weird, but he's watching over me. Anyways, uh, uh, lastly, thank you. Thank you, Bethesda, so much. Uh, thank you for allowing a young man to fill this role. Um, not many people would give that. Uh, not many people would take that take that step. And I thank you for doing that. You know, some may have not felt I was the answer, and that's okay. But please know, I still have a beautiful vision for this church, and this will always be home. Uh, as I step down from my position today, please know I gave you my all in leading you not only musically but spiritually. But God has been calling me to something very different that I've been wrestling him about for years now. Um, teaching his word is something I'm passionate about and on fire about. And I want you to understand that. I thank you for understanding that this opportunity of me stepping back gives me a chance to um, I'll learn more about our Savior, along with being behind the pulpit at other congregations for experience as I look toward the next stage of my life the Lord is leading me to. Um, I want to... Uh, Thank God for continuing to work in my life and ask for your prayers going forward and I will definitely be in, in prayer for this church as well. I'm excited to see where God leads you all. Thank you. Day comes and I find myself 
Standing in the sun I can only imagine When all I will do Is forever Forever worship you I can only imagine yeah. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, and all of you be still. Will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence? Or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak? Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. I can only imagine I can only imagine Just a little gift. We really appreciate all you've done for us. Thank and, you. Uh, don't be a stranger. I won't be. Thank you. And one more thing. This is Catherine Hill. She's going to be our new pianist. She'll start next week. Everybody speak to Catherine and make her feel welcome. Um, I think she'll be a blessing to us as well. Thank you, Devin. Amen. Let's give him another hand. <clears throat> like I said, the um, couple of times I've watched you all and I've heard him play and heard him preach a word and you know where he's going. God's, God's going to use him in a mighty way. And so we certainly pray for you and your endeavors, Evan. Uh, just met him. I, I hadn't even really met him yet, but if he, he's a child of God, I already know him. And so certainly I also pray that uh, you've received something by keeping your focus on Jesus as you move forward. Because just like that song said, you can only imagine where you're going from this point on. And you're going to have the naysayers, you're always going to have the negative people. But what you do is you take those distractions and throw them to the side and focus on the positive, which is working for the Lord. That's it. That's it. And you know what's going to happen? You're still here. I took over a church, and I, I, if y'all mind me sharing this, I took over a church that was broken. You know, they, they had just had a, a big fight, had the church left, and when I came there, the pastor had, had and just taken stuff from him. They wanted to sue him, and I, my wife said, what have we got into? So we started calling ourselves missionaries. We've been missionarying for 12 years at this church, even though I'm their pastor. The thing of it is, is that you are now on the road that you have not traveled, but God is going to help you all along the way. That's one thing you cannot deny. God is in charge, and only God can do it. But I certainly hope and pray that you've been encouraged, you've been uplifted. Thank you, Wendy, for the, they were sitting at the fence of the house talking one day and asked me. And I said, you know what, sure, I needed a break anyway, you know. Um, you know, and, and, and I'm ready to come home. Uh, people say, don't be telling people you're ready to come. I am, I'm ready to come home. 
uh, wherever I go. Uh, I don't have to pass to nowhere. I'm ready to sit back and, and get on a bass guitar and do boom, 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 boom <laughs> and, and enjoy. Because it's hard. Anyone, and, and, and Devin, I don't know what, your, what your God is calling you to do, but anybody that wants to do this is crazy. You have to be called. Amen? You have to be called. And let me say this. Every last one of you in here are ministers in the house of God. You are here because God called you here. But there may be somebody here today. I know you don't, do, uh, you don't open the doors of the church and all that, but I do want to say this is an opportunity that if you don't know the Lord, you need to come to him because you don't know what tomorrow holds. Jesus does. If you don't know what your next moment is, Jesus does. And if you don't know him, you need to come to him because I can't imagine being without him, Amen. going through the trials and tribulations. A brother that talked this morning said he had been through some surgeries. I've been on death's bed. I flew in a helicopter from Eden, North Carolina to Baptist. Didn't know. Looking at my last flight, thought this is it. <laughs> I'm over. And yet here I stand. And so have many of you. You know, and if you have not had troubles in your life, let me tell you this. Keep on living. Because God will allow things to come into your life to test you, not to tempt you. And this is a test that you're going through. It took me 10 minutes to get here. I kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> My wife was getting all into a little book and the iPhone, because she reads, look at the iPhone all the time coming to church. I said, we're here already. That was enjoyable. And let me say this. I thank you because you greeted us with welcome arms. We felt the love of God. Amen. We felt the love of Christ. Yes. We felt the Holy Spirit as we came here. It has nothing to do with my, con my, my this. It's about the content, what's on the inside. And you have shown so much. And I know, my brother, you're going to be missed. You're going to miss it, too, because there's no place like home. Amen. I just watched The Wizard of Oz. There is no place like home. <laughs> Amen. You might not be able to tap your slippers, but yeah, yeah, he could come back. You never know where God's going to lead him. But I thank you for the opportunity. And let me just say this, this is the last thing, and then I'm close out. If you don't believe, the plan of salvation is simple. A, B, C. Admit that you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and was resurrected, and that he's the Son of God. Confess your sins and confess him. And you're saved. I don't know all the doctrine that people come up with, but that's it. You don't have to get to the water. You don't have to go and talk to nobody. You just, I love you, Lord. Accept me. I'm a sinner. I'm, I'm saved by grace. And you're saved. So as we stand to our feet, I guess that's how you do it. This, this is how I do it, okay? <laughs> as we stand to your feet, we're going to dismiss. And certainly, I guess we can close out with prayer. We'll close out with prayer. Father God, we come before you once again, uh, your humble servants. Just thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. We recognize you, Father, for you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are the one that woke us up this morning, that brought us safely here. And we pray, Lord, you take us safely back to our waiting destinations. If you have heard all the prayer requests and all the, 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 the petitions that have come up before you, Lord, we know that you are a prayer answering God, but we need to have patience to wait on you because you are an on-time God. Father God, we pray that someone here has been encouraged. Someone here has been strengthened. If someone is contemplating something crazy in their lives, Lord, give them direction right now, Lord. As the brother says, he's going to be stepping out on faith. That's your faith and his faith in you, Lord. We trust that wherever his endeavors are, we trust that wherever this church goes, these members here, that you lead them and guide them and that they lean not on their own understanding, but that they lean on you, Lord, in whom their power comes from. We thank you, Lord. And as we prepare to go and get that shrimp and chicken, we thank you, Lord, for that blessing. We thank you, God, because we got a, a meal for us as somebody that's going to go hungry today. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We are your church. We are your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. amen.